Uh, hey everyone, I'm Nishant, also known as Wizkid. Um, I'm working with the IP stewards and I work on maintaining IPFS companion. And this talk is about MV3, Manifest V3 updates. How many of you actually use IPFS companion in day-to-day -day life? A few folks, but those who don't, uh, let me go give a quick intro. <clears throat> IPFS companion is basically the easiest way to interact with your local IPFS node from within your browser without ever leaving your browser. It's essentially a browser extension that works with your favorite Chromium, Firefox, flavored browser. It sub enables support for IPFS protocol handlers, and it automatically loads content, address websites, and paths. Um, it also uh, makes it really simple to import and sharing on IPFS, and we have like 70,000 users, um, which are monthly active on our extension. And there are download links in the slide if you want to like figure that out. Um, this talk is specifically about MV3 updates and what Manifest V3 is. Um, Manifest V3 is basically the proposal for browser extensions, uh, which was introduced by Google in 2018. This issue landed uh, in January 2019 as issue number 666 on, on IPFS Companion. Um, and since, this, since then, Google has actually met with constant resistance around the transition plans and, well, the issue number is <laughs> 666. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a fitting issue number, right? <laughs> um, pardon? It does, it does. Yeah, so uh, Google has been facing a lot of like uphill battles around that. Um, they have been pushing the deadlines, and the new deadline is not before September 2023. Uh, and we have been working towards transitioning uh, IPFS Companion to work with MV3. Um, there is a huge checklist um, which is linked in the extension, uh, like in the presentation, which uh, tells what actually changed. But for IPFS companion context, the three things that actually changed were the local storage access, um, the background service worker that got introduced, and the blocking request API deprecation. Um, local storage uh, access was really simple to fix because now you cannot like have the background page context. Um, so you can just use the browser API to do local storage, but we're going to talk about the other two in detail. So <laughs> before MV3, the extension background context was like a windowed page. Essentially, it, it had all the Windows context. You could use all the browser APIs that you normally would. Uh, <clears throat> so the background page actually helped the companion do telemetry, inter-page communication, checking states, persisting to local storage. Uh, with the new web worker standard that they introduced, uh, the window context is no longer available, and neither is local storage. So um, the service worker also goes to sleep uh, when in background, so there, is some, there was a bug regarding this, which recently got fixed, so that also needs to be taken into account. Um, the other thing that got deprecated was the blocking request API. Um, earlier, this is, how used to, uh, this is how the companion used to work. Uh, the web request would originate, the companion would block that request, it would check, can IPFS actually serve that request, and then accordingly redirect it. <clears throat> now, in MV3, this API no longer exists, and since requests cannot no longer be blocked, it's really hard for companion to determine um, how, to, how to redirect this request. Uh, but they did provide an alternative, which was called the Declarative Net Request API, and this is how it works. So the web request originates, um, the browser checks if there is a declared route which can be actually used to redirect the request, and then it would redirect it. The companion can no longer intercept those requests and block those. Instead, it just observes it as a third-party viewer of the request. Um, it will check if the request can be served by IPFS, and if that happens, it will go to the browser and tell it, hey, this is the new route you want to register, and um, then do the redirect. Um, <clears throat> there's a hard limit on the declarative block rules. You can no longer have more than 5,000 redirect rules inside the browser. Um, requests can only be observed, not intercepted. And once a block rule has been added, the browser will redirect the request. It will not let the extension know what happened with the request, essentially. <clears throat> so um, there was a bunch of workarounds that got implemented. Um, we can now monitor requests and register rules um, for the requested resource. Um, so we can actually determine if the request can be served by IPFS the same way we did that before, but now we register a route. Um, and 
now, since the rules also support regular expressions, we can cleverly determine what the regular expression for that route might look like and use that instead. So that bypasses that 5,000 rule limit. So we can do uh, domain-based routing instead of like routing uh, per request. But there are things that actually break <laughs> because of this. Um, that only second request is served by the rule. Telemetry is iffy. It may or may not work. Uh, recovery pages, uh, recovering pages become really, really hard because there was a recovering feature that got implemented which allowed recovering of requests from public gateways, but that does not, no longer work. Uh, we also now need to maintain a rules list in memory, <laughs> and it's like a least frequently used um, ESC cache implementation that actually needs to be maintained in the memory, and then we update the rules dynamically in the browser. Uh, Brave and Firefox have promised that they will still support the old API, so there also needs to be work around into figuring how we'll do the blocking or how we'll do the new uh, declarative net request API. So let's do a quick demo here. So I'm running a RC4 for version 3.0, and how it works is if I go to a Wikipedia link, it actually gets directed to the local host. The same link on dweb would also work the same way. Um, we can look in the service worker console for what the rules look like. I can just increase the screen size. So this is how the conditions are actually calculated. We can dynamically generate these regular expressions and tell it how to redirect it and how to replace the route and dynamically generate the new route. And that's basically how it works. <clears throat> Okay, so the current state, um, all of this work is being tracked in issue number 1152 on IPFS companion repo. Uh, TypeScript support has been added, which was missing earlier from the IPFS companion. Um, so yeah, you can write TypeScript code now. Um, telemetry events need validation. Firefox did not impl implement this service worker um, background spec for some reason. They felt they had event pages and that was sufficient. So there needs to be work around for those as well. Um, there needs to be more tests to prevent regressions in the future. Uh, <clears throat> there's a channel called IPFS GUI Dev where you can find all the release candidates for these extensions, and those work with the manifest V3. Uh, remainder of the work will be prioritized after IPFS thing. Contributions are really welcome. Here's a repo, uh, here are the issue link, and the MV3 work is being tracked in this branch. You can reach out to the group on the Filecon Slack or reach me directly um, under the handle WizKit. And that's basically the end of my presentation. Yeah. Questions? If none, I'm good. Thank you. I have a question. Oh. So, so yeah, if, if I want to run one of the release candidates, what should I do? You just download it and drag and drop on your extensions page. It's a zip file, and it will just install. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Yes. Oh. Uh, what's the plan for having more people run IPFS Companion slash who do you think should be the primary user of IPFS Companion? Yeah, so um, what I feel is this is the gateway for everybody who wants to jump into the IPFS bandwagon. They should start here. Uh, but the plans look like once we have this MB3 wor workaround uh, in there, then probably it will be sort of marketed with IPFS desktop. Like if you download IPFS desktop, then you also want this companion and make use of this remote control for your node. Or um, we have not explored, but it's like in very early stages, but there might, might be ideas around like how can we use this to effectively um, you know, advertise uh, to our IPFS users that this is something that we want. So yeah, that will be DBD for now, yeah. No worries. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like error handling and like recovery when like something fails coming through there? Yeah, so uh, recovery mechanism um, was recently introduced in uh, IPFS Companion like three months ago or something where the page goes down, it shows a recovery screen and then you can recover using a public gateway. Now the same thing happens. The, we are observing the request and if the local node is offline, 
the rules get updated to the recovery page instead, and then you start recovering those requests and those gets reloaded for all the pages that were not being able to load it. And now you can start recovering too um, using the public gateway. Hopefully we can see some synergy with the Helia work that's been happening and probably have a Helia service worker gateway um, within the service worker and we will probably not need that recovery at all. That's awesome, yeah. 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 I'm excited to see that. <laughs>